Sports live on a Tuesday from a moment's peace salon and day spa. It's one of our favorite spots to be because usually that means we're about to celebrate something. So the holiday is coming up uh, here at a moment's peace salon and day spa. Great spot for you uh, to win this Christmas season by getting the perfect gift. All it needs to be is a gift card, a momentspeace.com slash Christmas. And Zach, we are here today to discuss the firing of Derek Mason and a couple things about it, how it impacts Jeremy Pruitt and the Tennessee Vols. Then the kicker situation of what happened with uh, Vanderbilt soccer goalie, Sarah Fuller uh, doing the kickoff at the second half for Vanderbilt and what that turned into. You have something that you've learned about the Vandy football program from that kicking situation that we'll talk about. And then who should Vandy go higher? What direction does Vanderbilt need to go in with their new football coach? Because I could argue it's a very important hire. The Tennessee Vols are kind of treading water at this point, and that's saying it nicely. Uh, With their football program, Vanderbilt has an opportunity to go change their culture at their football program. Who should they go hire? It's going to be a good show this morning, and we've got our Tuesday trivia, Zach, which we will get to 100 questions by the end of today. We're going to see if we can get that 75% mark. We need a big day from our trivia people. So welcome in. Let's get this thing fired up. Yeah, we're going to have a great show. Always love being here in Cool Springs at a moment's peace. Uh, a lot to unpack and a lot to discuss today on this Tuesday. Before we get going, though, bottom right corner of your screen, if you're watching on Periscope slash Twitter, please share the show. You'll see those three little dots. You can share the broadcast that way. We need to pop up in your Twitter followers timeline. Also, what's going on YouTube? What's going on Twitch? This is our, our first live broadcast. We're all streams right here live from a moment's peace. On Facebook, bottom left corner of your screen, share, share, not a public. We say on the show every single time we go live, sharing is caring. So if you care about all of your friends, they need this to pop up in their Facebook friends news feed. Mm -hmm. Let's get this party started here, Austin. Uh, A Tennessee-themed show today. And, I mean, the SEC football has been up and down, up and down, and it's getting rockier for Vanderbilt. I feel like it's getting rockier for Tennessee. Yeah, so when you say Tennessee theme, not just the Vols, because we're talking about Vanderbilt and Derek Mason and what happened with the kicking situation, but also how it impacts Jeremy Pro. Let's get to going officially. Welcome to A to Z Sports. I'm Austin Stanley. He is Zach Bingham. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at A to Z Sports. You like our Facebook page at A to Z Sports Nashville. We are Nashville's on demand sports talk network, and we go live every weekday morning at 8 Central Time. Got to thank our sponsors because they make it happen for our show, for our business. And for you guys, Renters Warehouse Nashville, the professional landlords in the Nashville area, RentersWarehouse.com is where you go to find out how much your home can rent for. Man, do the Pulse of Fitness for one 15-minute workout equals five-plus hours in the weight room. Mandu.com, your first workout is absolutely free. Uh, the Tucker Agency, saving you money on your personal insurance by going to TuckerTN.com, so you should check them out to save some money there. Calvin and Subtle for your new hardwood floors and finishings at calvinandsubtle.com and the Bone and Joint Institute, boneandjointtn.org, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care, boneandjointtn.org. So, Zach, I'll just ask you out of the gate. Were you surprised that Vanderbilt actually pulled the trigger and fired Derek Mason this weekend? Uh, no, uh, initially no. Cause after what I learned a little bit more, right. As the game and, uh, the anticipation of the game against Missouri and it was all messed up. They were supposed to play Tennessee. Remember, right? Yes, yes. And then they decided to, to not play, Tennessee. not play the Tennessee. SEC was like, we're going to get two games in and then move others back. Right. And the performance on top of the season yielded the firing from Derek Mason. It absolutely did. He was, he was not the right coach for the job anymore. I think at the time when he was hired like seven years ago, I, I think that he was. He, you know, he had just come off his defensive coordinator, Stanford, had uh, a good relationship, Stanford, Vanderbilt, that connection of uh, academics and sure. athletics. I thought he, he was the right man for the job, but he got tiresome. And you know what? He, he got caught by the rigors of the SEC. The SEC East also got better right you got to remember that and so that hurt him i think any vanderbilt coach from here on out will have the expectation the ceiling will be what james franklin accomplished because that is the only coach in this era of football to have success i mean the man won nine and nine games and it went to bowls yes right so and, and yeah you're right and and no vanderbilt 
coach in this era of football has been able to accomplish that, it was it was time. You cannot not win games. I mean, there's the job the job description of a head football coach in college is you have a lot of things on your plate, mm -hmm. but priority number one is to win. I mean, that yields the most money, that yields the most fans, which yields the most money. Vanderbilt's priority is not athletics. Yeah, we know that. Right. But you have to try. And, well, and that's, the, I think, the struggle with a lot of Vanderbilt fans and outsiders' perspective, perspective is Vanderbilt doesn't try. Well, and Louie is booing the firing of Derek Mason. Louie is a, vault, is a Vandy fan. I don't know why you should be booing this. Uh, apathy is what seeped into Vanderbilt's football program over the last couple of years. Uh, but Sean says How the coach— How can you boo this firing? The, the man didn't win again. The, the coach, uh, Sean says the coach can't fix something the front office won't let them. Vandy will never get out of the SEC basement. Uh, and Brent does say Derek Mason's record of Vandy was 27-55 and 55 and 10-46 and 46 in the SEC. How could anyone be surprised? The reason why you could be surprised is because Vanderbilt has a new athletic director with Candace Story Lee. They have a new chancellor, and it's a COVID pandemic year. When Vanderbilt doesn't like to spend money— Vanderbilt's probably more likely to not make a decision like this to cost itself buyout money for Derek Mason. But they did the right decision. I think Vanderbilt should be applauded for doing it right now. In my opinion, they should have done this a couple of years ago. They definitely should have done it last year. Uh, but the situation has changed now where Derek Mason is out as Vandy's head coach. And it was the right move. It got stale. A lot of defections from the roster uh, throughout the season, even after COVID opt-outs earlier on. And it seemed like things got worse over the weekend with all that happened with the kicking situation and Sarah Fuller, none of which is Sarah Fuller's fault. We'll say that out, up front, not her fault for doing what she was asked to do whatsoever. Yeah, that's what she was asked to do, that, Correct. right? Yes. Uh, she stepped up in a time of need. I personally think, I think it was a publicity stunt. I think that is is what it was, right? And Vanderbilt got some publicity from it. ESPN gave them notoriety for it. And look, it was a, a big thing that happened in college football, first time ever. But Vanderbilt didn't do their part. I think that's the sad thing. Vanderbilt failed Sarah Fuller. They failed the stunt. And that's, and that's what I learned afterwards. Vanderbilt gave her an opportunity to be a part of something very special. But they couldn't score a point. They, they could not get in field goal range for her to get an opportunity. She couldn't showcase her talent. I think the world and the country was waiting to see what kind of kicker she could be. If she made a 30-yard field goal, you talk about a storyline. That's incredible. Just an extra point. Now, I know that yeah, it has higher expectations for the Vandy offense, but the Vandy offense was what was improving the last month of the season. But they failed her. Yes, I, I They don't... did, and that's why I, the team failed her, and Vanderbilt then looked at that and said, this team has failed this university. The and, But here's the most important thing that I learned about the entire situation regarding Sarah Fuller and Vanderbilt. All right, let, let me let you let me let I've you, got it. Okay. I'm locked That's and loaded. Good. That's good. I'll let you get to that, but first let me tell you guys about Renters Warehouse, the professional landlords in the Nashville area. If you've lost your job or lost some income and you think, man, that mortgage is really biting deep in the monthly income, don't panic sell your house. That's a bad move. Hang on to that long-term equity and let Renters Warehouse bail you out in a pinch. Renters Warehouse Nashville at RentersWarehouse.com. If you are looking to get into the rental uh, property game, they can help you uh, make a lot of money, get that mailbox money as well. RentersWarehouse.com. No binding contracts, no marketing costs, no hidden fees, nothing like that. Uh, RentersWarehouse.com is all it takes. Broadcasting live from a moment's peace, a moment's peace.com slash Christmas. This is the easiest Christmas present you will ever buy. I do it every year. Yeah, I mean, it is clockwork. Yes. It is literally clockwork. A momentspeace.com slash Christmas. Go buy a gift card and boom shakla. Whether it's whether it's a stocking stuffer, whether you're giving it to your, your wife, your loved one, your mother, it doesn't matter. It's the perfect gift. All right, Austin, I'm going to tell yes. you this. Okay. After we learned more things about, I think, the Vanderbilt football team as a whole when they faced Missouri – Look, they brought Sarah Fuller in because they were in a tough spot because of COVID. They didn't have a kicker, right? So that was the justification of it. It all it worked out, and then all of a sudden it didn't. But as they interviewed Sarah Fuller, 
Two things I think that she said after the game made me open my eyes. They were getting shellacked. They were getting beat really bad, boat raced by Missouri. And I, uh, what Sarah Fuller said was a- after the game, she says on the sidelines, she was trying to be inspirational. She was trying to say, hey, guys, it's okay. We can come back. A bad play happened. There, she said there was no emotion on the sideline. Mm-hmm. Well, why was that? Was this because they had just lost all of their games prior? Was this because they didn't believe in themselves? And then on the other side, and, and it was reported that Derek Mason had Sarah Fuller give a halftime speech, a motivational speech. Well, that didn't take, right? So all of these things, and again, you can call them what they are. This was an injection of uh, of energy to this football team and no energy came from it that was the problem and so that's why they had to fire Derek Mason and I think it was because Sarah Fuller came from a a winning culture in as a woman soccer team they were good right I mean they yeah, they, they won the SEC championship for the first time in I believe 20 something years her 96 team, so it's tough ask Joe Burrow You go from the greatest college football team in the history of college football to the worst team in the Cincinnati Bengals who cannot protect you. Yeah, that that was the difference of going from a a team. Let's just let's strip ourselves of sports. Let's say soccer team, SEC champion Mm -hmm. football team can't win a game to save their life. And so that injection of energy didn't take. Vanderbilt had to fire. She actually was the best thing that happened because she told Vanderbilt it's time. I don't disagree at all. I I think Sarah Fuller acknowledging in her first week on the Vanderbilt football team that this team has no energy, this team has no fight, no drive, no nothing, that's the biggest indictment of Derek Mason as Vandy's head coach. It's easy. And and it absolutely, the fact that – and. She talked to the press via Zoom uh, post game and Sunday morning. The decision was apparently made su- Saturday night to fire Derek Mason. And I'm guessing as soon as she said uh, in that post game press availability, yeah, I asked the coaches for permission to speak to the team at halftime. If I were the chancellor, or the AD, or anybody who has any care about Vanderbilt athletics, if, as soon as I heard that, that's done. No, no more. It cannot continue to grow and fester even bigger of a bad situation. I have the perfect analogy. It's the greatest analogy I've ever made on this show to date. It's hyping yourself up. I, and you know what? I'm going to pay it, fly, and so. I'm going to pay it off. Okay. I'm going to pay it off right now. Okay. You ever seen the show Bar Rescue? Yeah. Sarah Fuller is John Taffer. She I, came I, in, I, she came into the she did, that's exactly I mean, what she did. She came into it says this bar is trash. I'm guessing it's the, no good. I'm guessing the delivery was different. The probably slightly <laughs> John Taffer is <laughs> constantly uh, nearing vein popping in his neck. Probably different, but she walked into this Vanderbilt program and said, "We got to shut this down. It's got bad management. It's got bad players, bad employees, bad uh, everything. We got to shut it down. Mm-hmm. It's not working." That that I think Sarah Fuller is John Taffer, and. You know what? There's only so much John Taffer can do. He can't rescue every ball. Well, because Sarah Fuller at some point will go back to being a soccer player, right? And then what What does the bar do? Does the bar go back into its old bad habits after John Taffer leaves? Or do they actually take the renovations and, and move forward with a better culture? I think we know this, that the, S, the uh, women's soccer team at Vanderbilt and Tim Corbin's baseball program have winning culture. Women's the, bowling. The bowling, I was going to mention that as well. There are winning cultures. There is such a thing of winning at Vanderbilt in that athletic program, but not in the revenue sports that actually matter when it comes to what's being done on that campus. As we wrap this conversation up and shift to Jeremy Pruitt and the impact of what happened Men's to golf, Vanderbilt. Thank you, Nash. Yeah, uh, what happened to Vanderbilt. What? How is that related to the University of Tennessee? Tress Wynn gets – the love of the show. And I don't think I've ever given Tress Tress ever gotten the love of the show. Not even close, (laughs) but this is what Sarah Fuller found out about the Vanderbilt program. What is that? She walked in there and she said, the kitchen is filthy. (laughs) Clean it up, (laughs) clean it up. That's exactly what happened. That's what John Taffer would have done. That's what Sarah Fuller did. So Vanderbilt fans, you better 
You better praise and thank Sarah Fuller for what she did to your program to now as we shift and we'll talk about later on yes, in the show. I, I always like I mentioned I mentioned who comes next. Yeah, I mentioned blessings in disguise, and I, I said this about Butch Jones. Butch Jones losing at Vanderbilt in 2016 was a blessing in disguise because if he beats Vanderbilt, he's nine and three. He goes to the Sugar Bowl. He gets a contract extension. He's not fired in 2017. He gets another year. I think they should have fired Butch Jones at the end of 2016 season. But Sarah Fuller going on, Derek Mason giving Sarah Fuller an opportunity fired himself. And that was a blessing in disguise for Vanderbilt. Uh, to get that situation to happen. You want to hear another crazy blessing in disguise? What's that? That they said on the broadcast this past weekend. Ole Miss and Mississippi State. When uh, last year, when they raised the leg to Mississippi State. Yes. That one action yielded a, over 120 different coaching changes. That's nuts. That one movement of raising the leg in Starkville to do what needed to be done for that city and that town and that university. Yes. That changed the landscape of 120 individual coaching jobs, assistant and head coaches. Yeah. That's yep. the bl blessing in disguise has happened all the time. Yeah. And, and Will says, two uh, but really why did it take so long for them to fire Derek Mason? And uh, they should have, they should have fired Derek Mason a couple of years ago. He wasted all he could get out of Kyle Shermer, Keyshawn Vaughn, and some really good players. Ralph Webb even was six and six and losing a bowl game in Birmingham that, or Shreveport that nobody watched. And VU All Access says this: apathy. Apathy was allowed to set in to the Vanderbilt fan base, and it took too long. Like that's where if you're a Tennessee fan watching the show today. You are you need to look at Vanderbilt and you see what happens when apathy hits a football program. And it took Vanderbilt and their administration way too long to adjust to that apathy. So, Zach, let's get to our next question. And that regards Jeremy Pruitt's job security and how it was or wasn't impacted by the firing of Derek Mason. Does the firing of Derek Mason impact Jeremy Pruitt's job security at Tennessee? That's the question we're asking you guys. Does the firing of Derek Mason, we just talked about it on why, does that impact Jeremy Pruitt's job security at Tennessee? Comment in the comment section on Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, and Twitch. I really want to hear your answer. Before yep. we get to those answers, I want to talk to you about Calvin and Subtle. Calvin and Subtle, rethink this holiday season. The one thing you should do is go to amomentspeace.com slash Christmas, buy a gift card. The other thing that you need to do is you need to upgrade your house with brand new hardwood floors. Calvin and Subtle, a, subtle, a great presenting sponsor in A to Z Sports, efficient, cost effective, but really, really good quality hardwood floors. Calvin and Subtle.com. You call them up, you go to their showroom, you pick out your perfect hardwood floors. One to two weeks, they install your new hardwood floors. That's Calvin and Subtle.com. It is these sports live in a moment's peace on a day spa. As Zach mentioned, a moment's peace.com slash Christmas. Get a gift card. You win. That's it. That's as easy as it is. A lot of times you don't know what to get for Christmas uh, for that loved one in your life. Just do this a moment's peace.com slash Christmas gift card and you win. By the way, mybookie.ag, code Mike Titans to double your first deposit. Zach, that backdoor Eagles cover crushed me last oh, night. Oh, you got it. Yeah, uh, I had Seahawks minus six oh, and a half. Oh, man. Not happy, not thrilled about it, but you live to fight another day. MyBookie.ag, code my tight. So how does the firing of Derek Mason... That's what Carson Wentz will do to you. I know. Well, but, yeah, but I picked the Seahawks to come. And just and frustrating as, as all get out. No, so, Carson Wentz will just give you enough to... To cover. To screw you over, <laughs> to, to, but never win again. Carson wins. All he does is cover as an cover, underdog. He'll, he'll cover as an underdog, or he'll get hurt, uh, or he'll lose a game. All right, so how does uh, this firing of Derek Mason impact the job security of Tennessee? Is Does it impact, in your opinion, yes or no? I saw VU All Access uh, say, um, especially if by some miracle, Vanderbilt beats Pruitt. And I I was surprised by the lack of offensive output by Vandy on Saturday against Missouri because of what they'd been building up with Ken Seals and the rest of that young offense over the last month or so. I thought they'd be able to put some points up, and I thought if Tennessee and Vandy played on Saturday that Tennessee would have lost that game um, from there. So Tate says no, beating two more teams this season saves Pruitt's job. 
you're asking Pruitt to beat Vanderbilt and either AM or Florida, who are top six football teams. And he says beating Florida saves Pruitt. That's a long shot. Uh, Ronnie says, because it's been three years and Pruitt has gotten eons worse as a head coach and the Vols haven't gotten better as a team, period. He's done with Pruitt. Scotty says, if Tennessee is following uh, Candy Built um, in anything, then they have fallen further down the rabbit hole than anyone's willing to admit. I, I don't think it's following Vanderbilt's lead uh, by firing their coach after Vandy fired theirs, but I said the same thing after South Carolina fired Will Muschamp, is that now you've seen two SEC programs eat millions and millions and millions of dollars. And if they fired Jeremy Pruitt, which in my opinion would be the correct thing to do this season, it's firing Jeremy Pruitt. They're going to have to eat 12 to $15 million for him and his coaching staff buyout. And that's hard to swallow. But is it the right thing to do for, for your football program? In my opinion, yes. Because making a good hire to get you out of that can help you out and get the fan base back. Because the pro, the athletic department and athletic departments across the country, Zach, have been losing millions of dollars this year because of COVID-19. If Tennessee's fan base starts getting apathetic, they're going to continue to lose money after COVID is resolved-ish and Jeremy Pruitt's still the head coach. They need to get juice back into the fan base and Jeremy Pruitt brings zero juice. So yes, I think this Vandy firing should impact Jeremy Pruitt's do- job security. And does it, it? Not should. I don't care yes, about should. Yes. It does it? It's another SEC program saying it's worth it to fire our coach in a pandemic. That only helps Tennessee feel more comfortable doing something like that. All right. Again, nobody wants to be the first. South Carolina stepped up and did it. And so now Vanderbilt followed too. Tennessee's next. There's no other SEC program who has a coach failing like Tennessee's that hasn't already been fired. Uh, that is true. Uh, you cannot deny that because, you know, even Missouri, they got a new head coach. Arkansas has a new head coach. Mississippi State hasn't done very well. They have a new head coach. So you're right. Uh, Tennessee. And Missouri's improving. Yeah. Well, yeah. They just, Tennessee's last win was over Missouri, which feels like. Tennessee can't score 41 points. No, <laughs> not with Jared Garantano they have quarterback. It this year. Here, here's why the answer is no, though. I think you're incorrect because it doesn't. Because what is the question, Austin? The question is about Derek Mason. I don't think Derek Mason has any difference of whether Jeremy Pruitt is fired or not. Vanderbilt does, but Derek Mason doesn't. I think it's more it's the on firing of Derek Mason. No, it's not, it's, it, and it doesn't matter because what's going to matter is if Tennessee loses to Vanderbilt after they lose to Florida this weekend, then that will decide. But it doesn't matter who Vanderbilt's coach is. It doesn't matter if Derek Mason is the head coach or their interim is the head coach. It's about the outcome of Tennessee versus Vanderbilt. It's in Nashville, correct? Yes. So it's on the road. Maybe uh, There's going to be like a 1,000 fans there because Vandy has allowed parents – to go to the games of the players, which means that Tennessee or opposing parents get to come to Right. Home field advantage is not as big of a deal this year, obviously, with COVID. But it doesn't matter about who's coaching Vanderbilt. It's whether Vanderbilt can improve or be better to possibly beat Tennessee that day. Because the uphill climb, Austin, we've talked about this before. Tennessee, they have two things in the way of firing Derek, uh, Jeremy Pruitt. Phil Fulmer and money. They don't want to pay Jeremy Pruitt. They just gave this man an extension. That's counterintuitive. You right? You don't do that, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And it made the buyout that much more hard. So that to so that's difficult. And Fulmer is buddies with Jeremy Pruitt. He is well, good, good old boy. I don't know about buddies, but the, one hired the other, and the other's first and big one decision. say right big decision yes. he saved he saved Phil Fulmer from a very tough spot that he was put in ah uh, he did Fulmer nobody Fulmer. wanted to coach Tennessee Austin right. don't be in but denial I don't think but Jeremy Pruitt did save Phil Fulmer from that spot no Phil Fulmer just got the job and who else was in the running uh Mel Tucker who is now the coach at Michigan State and yeah. I believe Sam Pittman I, I believe those were Fulmer's final three or Pruitt Mel Tucker and Sam I Pittman. thought Sam Pittman had already gotten hired no, Zan Putman just got hired at Arkansas this past year. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, you're, oh, so you're talking about the year before. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, in, in, the, in December of 2017, when Fult Fulmer got, by the way, December 1st was the day that John Curry got fired and Fulmer got elevated. But Sam Pittman wasn't the splash hire that Tennessee could have hired. Jeremy Pruitt. Those had, were the three finalists. You no, know, what I'm saying is Jeremy Pruitt out of those was the most recognizable name. Sure. That's because why Alabama saved, was about to go to the national championship. That's why he saved Phil Fulmer. Phil Fulmer's in a tough spot. Those other two, you would have Tennessee fans look up who Mel Tucker is. They would Google I Sam agree. Pittman. I, I, so, so and that's Zach what, Reagan says Kevin Steele as well. You got to Google Kevin Steele. That sounds Not like as much. That, that sounds like uh, Kevin Steele is a name some, from like the mid two thousands. But nobody know knows who, who that is. Nobody knows. I, so that's why Jeremy Pruitt saved Philip Fulmer because he was a somewhat recognizable name when Tennessee didn't have a choice. Because they couldn't hire anybody. Well, he was just Nick Saban's guy, right? And so that, that's all he that. was. There's he was Nick Saban's guy, and he was on two a days back on MTV in the mid 2000s. No, that doesn't matter. He, he was he was somebody compared to the nobodies that they were interviewing. All right. So the, the difference is, Austin, it's simple. Tennessee beats Vanderbilt at the end of the season. Jeremy Pruitt stays the head coach. Jeremy Pruitt loses to Vanderbilt. Maybe they're thinking about firing him. I, I actually think the pendulum shifts. I think it's a it's a win, stay, lose, get fired game. I, I you can't lose lo- to Vanderbilt. Logically, no, no. I'm on. I'm. If they lose to Vanderbilt, there's no choice. If they finish the season with eight straight losses, because well, you can't last the off season with that. Oh taste no, 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 no. You, I absolutely because well, what are you two and you're two and eight yeah. with eight straight losses. It all went to you know where at halftime in Athens, Georgia, between the hedges. When you were the first 10 quarters of the season, you're like, oh, 17, my God. 14, 21, 17, 21, 17, Tennessee up. And you're like, oh, huh, this is interesting. And then JG fumbles and throws picks. And then he's been doing that ever since and giving up defensive touchdowns. And Jeremy Pruitt off of eight wins in a row, losing eight games in a row is unacceptable. So Brian, Brian's got a good point. He says, so if you're a Vol fan, do you pull for Vandy? And that's a hard thing to do because in the moment while you're watching a game, if you're a Tennessee Vols fan, you never want to lose to Vanderbilt. But like I said, in 2016, blessing in disguise was losing to Vanderbilt. Was I mad during that game when Alvin Kamara ran out of bounds on fourth down to lose? Yeah, I was upset. But I took a deep breath and said, that that's what needed to happen. Austin, be careful what you wish for because Mark Beach brings up on Facebook why would a top tier coach come to Tennessee, and what top tier coach would come? Well, we've we've thrown out the Hugh Freeze well, thing, and I'll, and but I'll, without Hugh Freeze, who are you left with? Look, that's fine. Let, let's jump into that here in a second because I do have that. That is not fine. That is a problem, and, and it's fine to have the conversation. Is what I meant, I guess, in less words, not enough words. But let's have that conversation now uh, because there was another national. Uh, analyst to, Jim Harbaugh. Would you? There was another national analyst to put Hugh Freeze and Tennessee together. But first, Zach, tell the people about the Tucker agency. Yeah, TuckerTina.com. Save money on your insurance. Do you know how much you pay for your insurance? You probably, no, actually, you, you, you no, probably, don't. you don't, and that's an issue. You could save twenty percent on your insurance by going to TuckerTN.com. Will at TuckerTN, and his team will help you. Right there, right out of the gates. You email him, Will at Tucker T and say, Hey, I heard about you on A to Z Sports. How do I save money on my insurance? The average customer saves 20%. That's car insurance, life insurance, homeowners insurance, renters insurance. If you rent, they've got you covered. They're a great sponsor here on A to Z Sports. That's Will at Tucker TN.com. All right, A to Z Sports, another national college football writer attaches Hugh Freeze and the Tennessee Vols. Remember last week we were talking about Adam Rittenberg of ESPN.com who said and reported that industry sources were telling him that Hugh Freeze's preferred job is Tennessee. Are these humors? Hmm. Maybe. That would be correct. These are humors. Yeah. And I I laugh at them because they are humors. I was trying to think, is there something you could do that's not an actual word of humor? No, these are humors. Yeah, I guess so. It's comical. But once again, (laughs) uh, that was last week. And then yesterday, Bruce Feldman brings up Hugh Freeze and Tennessee. And Bruce Feldman says that Hugh Freeze 
has always had something about the Tennessee job that he's wanted to get. I've look. I've gone on record a few weeks ago. I know Hugh Freeze. I went, uh, old, went Ole Not Miss. I've seen. As, uh, well, we've interviewed him. We, I mean, yeah, we, but we don't know him personally. But, but <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't actually want to know yes, his personal yes. life. Personally, we know some. We know some things. We don't know all things. But Hugh Freeze. I've said it's time for Tennessee to sell their soul to the devil. This is the time. It's that time. It's gotten to the point. Old Miss did it. Mississippi State did it. It's time for Tennessee to do it. Sell your soul. You have nothing to lose. It's gotten this bad. Jeremy Pruitt's not the guy. Derek Dooley wasn't the guy. Hugh Freeze, it's time to get that man a burner account and send him to Knoxville. It's time. So let me read. I don't know if they'll be able to get him. And here's the issue. Yeah. Just with anything, right? It's all or nothing. Because if you don't get Hugh Freeze and he balks at it or negotiations mess up or things don't work out, you're left with a pile of coal on Christmas. Sure. You don't want to do that. Sure. You so, want the shiny red car. You want actually those two cars in that GMC commercial that they've shown constantly on rotation of the wife and husband coming out and they just bought two brand new cars. I'd like to know what they do. You're going to go from that to nothing okay. for Christmas. All right, so let's read some comment comments. Rob says Hugh Freeze proposed to his wife in Newland Stadium. That is well documented and true. Uh, let's see. Um, John it's, it's John like a says it's a humor. John says screw Freeze, not a good person. Which mother which would uh, much prefer David Cutcliffe? I'll actually tell you something that I heard about David Cutcliffe yesterday. Somebody told me that there is. Uh, uh, rumors. I don't know how to how to make that all nice and cute, but rumors and rumblings that David Cutcliffe could retire at the end of the season from the Duke job. So those are cloomers. <laughs> cloomers. So <laughs> well, they're not. It's cut. So it's not clue. So that's why you can't cut cliff notes. Cut cliff notes. There you go. Um, cut cliff notes saying that um, that he could retire at the end of the season. Brian says, man, you're going to have to offer Hugh Freeze top 10 coaching money. Matthew says they have no choice. Rob is just saying, yes, Zach. Uh, Donald says hiring Freeze will have the NCAA on your back. And that's, Sell your soul. And that's absolutely true. Sell your soul. Donald says he'd go after Matt Campbell at Iowa State if he was Tennessee. It's worked for Ole Miss. It has. You talk about that injection of energy that Sarah Fuller tried to do to the Vanderbilt program. It has done that to the Ole Miss program yeah. for Lane Kiffin. I was in Oxford last week. There's there's buzz. Right. So, he, Matt, again, Bruce Feldman, what Bruce Feldman said about Tennessee, or about Hugh Freeze, is he wins games, he's won everywhere he's been, and elevated each program, including Liberty, uh, into a top 25 prospect, uh, product. He's a fantastic play caller and has continued to evolve as a head coach. I'm convinced he could make South Carolina into a top 25 team quickly. Even more confident he'd do that at Tennessee, a job he grew up wanting. And even Auburn in less time. Now, Auburn's technically a top twenty-five team right now. Yeah, but um, Gus Malzahn, I, I think Hugh Freeze is a wanted man by those three schools. It's just right now South Carolina is the only team who's made the opening uh, there. Will Philip Fulmer sell the soul of Tennessee? That's the biggest question. It's not about what you think or I think or anybody else. Sure, thinks. it's Will Philip Fulmer. Go back on Jeremy Pruitt, and it's going to take Vanderbilt beating Tennessee. If Tennessee I, beats I, Vanderbilt, Philip Fulmer's not doing it. I'm with Terry. If if Tennessee does not fire Pruitt, they're they're stupid. Back it up, Terry. <laughs> back it up. Back Terry. it up, Terry. Uh, yeah. And so, and Jeff Jeff says I'm surprised no one said Urban Meyer. And Jake correct and correctly says because he wouldn't come to Tennessee, and I, I agree because uh, um. Uh, Feldman in this article talking about a bunch of names talks about Matt Campbell and Urban Meyer uh, as the big jobs like Michigan and Texas. That's where I, Matt Campbell would probably go. I just don't think, and Word Doctor says, in his opinion, Fulmer doesn't like Hugh Freeze. I don't know if that's the case well, or not. You go back to the it's the movie The Blind Side, but it's more that it was a book first that was actually pretty good, and I read it. And when Hugh Freeze was that head coach of Michael Orr, he did not like Philip Fulmer. And the Mike and the Orr family obviously 
but not or family, but the Tui family, obviously did not like Philip Fulmer jumping into that. And there was a lot of bad blood around that specific recruitment. Now, it's one recruitment that happened 15 years ago. Can you get over that? I hope so. God, that's 15 years ago? Probably, yeah. Yeah, because that was when I was in high school. Isn't that nuts? But again, so you asked me other names. We faced Michael Orr and Greg Hardy in the state championship game. Yeah. Good old times. And, Wildcats forever. And you asked me other names uh, that I would be interested in if it's not Hugh Freeze. And I said this again a couple weeks ago. Steve Sarkeesian. I would be comfortable with Steve Sarkeesian. Yeah. That's, Why? That's just not. Uh, I, I, I don't want any part of Steve Sarkeesian. If Why? I'm, if I'm Tennessee, excuse me. Why? I just he, – he's not – He's not the guy. Why? Hugh Freeze is the only guy. Why? Is, he should be the only choice. Give me an actual reason why Steve Sarkeesian is not the guy. Uh, it's a feel thing. A I feel, don't. I okay, don't. So you feel, have zero reason of actual of why Steve Sarkeesian not would not be the guy. Well, he he's has a. I'll tell you. I told you why last week. That's fine, and that's what I'm asking for. Steve Sarkeesian is not going. to – I don't think belief should go from an offensive coordinator job to a head coach job after he screwed the pooch at USC as a head coach. He needs to go somewhere else and 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 cut his teeth just like Lane Kiffin and Hugh Freeze did after their fallout. That's a perfect reason, Austin. You you want you got questions, I got answers. That's the answer. He needs to go somewhere and okay. be a head coach that's, that's and that's, prove himself. Asking you. It just and took prove me, himself. It just took me asking you four times well, for you. Prove answer. himself. Well, and, and that's the feel that I don't think Sark right, so, is ready for. So Look, Austin, you know this. You're you're not stupid. Tennessee is a big job with a lot of pressure yeah. that nobody sees not that nobody has and you know what who who got crushed under the pressure well it, it, who, again, who got crushed under the pressure at USC he had personal problems who got crushed under the pressure of USC I don't think it was the USC pressure who I think got it was just crushed other demons Steve Sarkeesian had demons that he was dealing with in his personal life but he was still winning games he got crushed under the, the pressure of USC the crazy thing is he was still winning football games as a head coach who had personal the responsibility problems. of USC and Tennessee? You can't have those right. demons wear their so ugly. So Bruce Feldman on Steve Sarkeesian. He fizzled out at USC as he struggled with personal problems, but word is he's in a much better place and has impressed a lot of folks in Tuscaloosa. That has carried over to parts of the coaching industry where he's turned down Power Five head coaching opportunities last year at Colorado and Mississippi State. People with knowledge of the, of the matter say South Carolina has a lot of interest in him but Sarkeesian is going to be very choosy. I think Sarkeesian is going to be very choosy. That makes a lot of sense because he has to be very uh, he has to be very, very pointed with, with, with what his next step is going to be, like you're saying. I think Tennessee is a much better job than South Carolina. That, that pressure at Tennessee would destroy that man. I don't think so. What, you don't know that. Like, he's, what are you again, talking about? Yeah, I do. Look at his history. Uh, that was big five, pro, that big was, programs, house of cards. And Tennessee is the ultimate job that yields the most amount of pressure. I, I, it's, it's the, the, the vol, vol Twitter single handedly can kill a coach one, one character at a time. It's the like, know what it is, Austin. Uh, vol Twitter can kill a man. Yeah. Vol Twitter did not kill, kill Derek Dooley or Butch Jones. Those two guys shot themselves in the face, killed Greg Shiano before he even started. Well, that, and that, Again, the the way Vol Twitter went about that was incorrect. That's why but it was you right. have to. That's why it's Phil Phil Fulmer has got. I think Hugh Freeze can handle the pressure because he's had harder pressure. He's had worse things happen to him. Zach, so so is Steve Sarkeesian. So why couldn't he? <laughs> like the point that you Hugh, just made Hugh about Freeze Hugh Freeze went and, away and and got head coaching experience <sighs> and and. Basically, mended his wounds a he little bit. He went to Liberty and won a bunch of games because Liberty has so much money because they're the, the what, biggest no, no, online college no. in the country. What did it do? What did it do for Hugh Freeze? It, it solidified. It made him no, relevant. It, no, again. no, it, Austin. It solidified that he's a good head coach. Well, he may he not can, be a great he can man. Win in, in yes. Whatever conference not, Liberty plays. Not everybody in the Sun can Belt. do that. Not, ev- not everybody who can beat Nick Saban can win in the Sun Belt. Okay. With. The players? It, Lane Kiffin did the same thing. He proved that he needed another opportunity. Whether th- Whoever gave it to him, again, I, I, conflicting feelings. I've always had that about Lane Kiffin, and I'm waiting for him to possibly mess up. And did Ole Miss, they sold their soul for Lane Kiffin. Tennessee, it's about that time. 
I'm I'm tired of honestly. I want Tennessee to get Hugh Freeze because I'm tired of hearing about it. I. All right, I'll say this again. John Daniel London, listen to me. He says, Cutcliffe made Duke a winning program. What do you think he would do with Tennessee? I heard, talked to somebody yesterday that there are Cutcliffe notes and rumors about David Cutcliffe retiring from Duke at the end of the season. So I don't think David Cutcliffe would take a new job at the age that he's at and try to go back to Tennessee. I, I believe David Cutcliffe will retire. So again... And there is no pressure to win at Duke. And he's done a great job at Duke and built a lot of great equity at so Duke. You're and saying, built so what's the what's the end game? So you're For saying what? Cutcliffe will then do He's retiring. That's that's the rumors is that Cutcliffe will retire from head coaching at the end of the season. Okay. And what does that mean? What? That he's retiring. That he's not going to coach anymore. He's uh, going to retire. In the Scope of this conversation. What does it mean? Because people brought it up about Cutcliffe and Tennessee, and I was just reiterating. Oh, that, well, yeah. That, <laughs> that doesn't matter. That, that's so stupid. It does matter. I was answering somebody's question. That's what we do on this show. We read comments and we react to them. But that, that's so, that is so not even close that uh, I don't even what? know who no, asked that. I, John, Dan, I read it. And clearly, you were looking something up and not listening or whatever, but I was reacting to a comment. That's what that but means. That's like the second time you talked about Cutcliffe. I know, Cutcliffe because is clearly, going, Cutcliffe, no. Okay. Move on. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like, concentrate on what I am what I'm, it is. Zach, I'm not I'm talking, I'm talking about in general. I'm talking about Tennessee fans. You concentrate Con on what con I concentrate on what we what needs to happen. <laughs> and that is Tennessee needs to lose to Vanderbilt. Okay. And yeah, then absolutely. They need to go hire a coach that is not I an old I, dog. I agree. Guy. I agree with you that losing to Vandy will make it way easier to do this. But I think they should move on, even if they beat Vandy and get to three and seven, because they're beating Vandy with an interim head coach and a team that doesn't want to play. Because that's what I've learned about Vandy's program too: is they don't want to play football anymore. Tennessee doesn't either. I, I mean, they have Van, Tennessee has not had the opt out mid season like Vandy has. That that is a fact. Van, Vanderbilt's roster is deteriorating because guys are saying, nah, I'm good. I'm done. Tennessee has not had that. But, but Tennessee is on that. The last two games, I think Florida could kill them. Florida could crush sure. them. Sure. Are they playing them. hard in the second half of games after Jared Garantano throws another pick six? No, they're not because they understand the situation. Yeah. But they have not Bad had the defection of the roster. Is, is meeting uh, season over. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another another big name coach that I do not think Tennessee should do anything with is Luke Fickle at Cincinnati. I don't think you can go defensive head coach anymore. Like you've got to go get somebody who's offensive minded uh, to go in here and juice up this program a little bit because Jeremy Pruitt has not worked out. All right. So Carter Shelby Thorpe uh, brings up this: If Hugh Freeze does get hired, this is a huge hypothetical. What are the expectations for him? And I'm sure if that happens, we'll do like four shows on those. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah. That's good. I think it's a little early to have this. But but brings up the the long play hypothetical. I think look, Jeremy Pruitt has improved this team from where Butch Jones left it. Correct. From the talent on the roster standpoint, yes. So that combined with what is Tennessee's problem? It, it, they don't have a quarterback. That's been their problem. That's been Jeremy's pro, Jeremy Pruitt's problem and its own fault. He Jeremy Pruitt is insane. He keeps doing the same damn thing over and over again, and he expects to win football games. And it's just not going to happen, especially when you when you face better football teams. It worked last year. The eight game winning streak was real, but those teams weren't good. Mm. Yeah, but again, the first step in rebuilding was being the teams you're supposed to beat, and they did that. So, like, while you're right, they still won those games, and you have to give them credit. But he's stayed the same, and other teams have improved. That's why Arkansas beat Tennessee. And VO Access says the Q quarterback in the secondary are atrocious. Yeah, QB and DB is bad. And Jeremy Pruitt's a DB guy by trait, and that's not getting any better. So, I, I think... I think that Tennessee needs to move on from Jeremy Pruitt regardless. Let's have a conversation about what we think uh, Vandy should do with their brand new um, coaching vacancy. And, and I want to hear the Vandy fans who are watching the show today about where they think their program should go with a new head coach. I've got one name in mind that I feel very confident about, and we'll discuss that here in a second. But first, let me tell you guys, 
about Mandu, the pulse of fitness, where one 15 minute workout at Mandu equals five plus hours in the weight room because of full body electronic muscle stimulation. It's great, guys. You do it once or twice a week and you simulate five to 10 hours in the weight room. It puts zero impact on your joint. So if you have an injury you've been nursing, they can handle you there. They can make that injury a lot better with electronic muscle stimulation. It's quick and easy. You're in and out of there. Again, the 15 minute workout will work you hard three days after that. And they also have a great deal going on right now for you at their website, mandu.com. If you or somebody you know has been thinking about Mandu and trying or jumping in, they have a holiday pack that includes uh, four classes at Mandu. Uh, so check that out, mandu.com. Your first workout is always free. A to Z Sports, we are live here from a moment's peace, a momentspeace.com slash Christmas. It's the easiest gift that you can do all holiday season. A $100 gift card would go a long way to your wife, your mom, your loved one. It is a perfect experience. Austin and I have been doing these broadcasts for years now. We believe in this. It's a great experience. It's very relaxing. That's the one, one word. We play the game one word. Relaxing when you come in here. So make sure you go to amomentspeace.com slash Christmas and get your gift card today. All right. It is Z Sports here live at a moment's peace. Uh, who should be number one on Vandy's candidate list to be their head coach? Because I see Puka saying Will Healy, um, Jay Gruden from Louie, which is interesting. Rob says Luke Fickle to Vandy would be good. Um, then I see another, uh, yeah, Ethan Ramsey says Will Healy, Puka, Will Healy, or Belichick, which I don't understand that either. But Chad says Jeff Fisher knows better than to take it. But Jeff Fisher has been mentioned by Chris Lee of VandySports.com that he actually has interest in the job. Brent says Clark Lee, the Notre Dame D coordinator and former Vandy player, Will Healy, but I hope he takes a better job. So this is now time for me to make the case for Will Healy to be Vandy's next coach. Will Healy is 35 years old. He is a Tennessee native out of the Chattanooga area. He is a young, energetic, fiery coach who knows how to bring people together. He has already resurrected a dead football program at Austin P. Nobody cared about Austin P football until Will Healy showed up and made them care. Clarksville actually rallied around that football program and they did a great job with renovations. They raised money. They got people to actually go to the game. I went to an Austin P game and it was all, it was a great atmosphere. Because Will Healy brings great charisma and chemistry and camaraderie to your football program and makes people believe in his message. He's also got amazing ties to in-state recruiting around the mid-state and in the private schools around the mid-state, which is where Vandy should be eating nonstop. They should be able to go into to Innsworth and MBA and Brentwood Academy and CPA and Father Ryan and these and FRA, which has good prospects, as well as Williamson County and Rutherford County and Metro, and get good football players to play down the street in Nashville. Will Healy has those connections. He got a really good athlete at uh, BA to turn down other offers to come play quarterback at Austin P. Will and he's already resurrected one program. I think he can help do it at Vanderbilt, and this is the only chance you can get him. If you if Vandy does not get Will Healy now, the next time Vandy's looking for a head coach, Will Healy's already already onto a bigger job. That's the trajectory he's on. So uh, this is one thing Austin and I we we argue and disagree quite a bit on this show. This is the one thing and topic that we are completely aligned with. I agree with every word you just said. I don't think I've ever said that about you. That I I Will Healy is the right guy. He, he checks the boxes, offensive-minded, young, ready, ambitious, can go out. It's a hard job, too, right? Willing to take on the challenge, knowing that he can get three or four, five good years and turn the program around. And, you know, where are you starting from? They haven't won a game, right? So, Which is where the, he started at the Austin The ceiling P. is the roof. Exactly. And Brent says, I watched Healy turn Austin P from 0 and 11 to an eight win team and had the number one recruiting class in the entire FCS. Totally changed the culture at Austin P. It's the only hire. Vanderbilt is in need of a culture change. I think Derek Mason's a very good man 
and I don't think he had a toxic culture at Vanderbilt. No. But he had a culture of, you know, not mm. winning's okay. Good men can lose. Yes. And, and 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 he lost his team. Yes. It sounds like. Greg says Healy's too smart and has too much potential to get stuck failing at Vandy with no support. But, Ask James Franklin about being stuck at Vandy. Yeah, well, and look, Derek Mason ran into the worst buzzsaw that is COVID. Right, you have a school that doesn't care about athletics, and then COVID hits, and they prioritize the safety of their players. Where other like A and M, right? There's a huge difference between how Vanderbilt views COVID and how Texas A and M views COVID. Right now, Texas A and M has missed a lot more games than Vanderbilt, but th- that's beside the point. It's he was set up to fail this year. Was well, because of the failures from the year before because he won't recruit. No, 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 no. He, he was, you should, I should have predicted, like we should have bet on that. It should have been the beginning of the season because we should have known this Austin COVID hit players were opting out. The school doesn't care about football. Vanderbilt's really bad anyway. Now they don't get the non-conference games. They got to play all sec games. There's they, no, they were losing those non-conference games last year anyway. Right? There's nothing to play for. Like We should have known that this was going to happen. This uh, Miss and, Cleo, and, and well, I we think, should have done that. And, and Puka knows. Puka says Healy will have the new chancellor. Yeah. The new chancellor who said, yeah, go ahead and fire Derek Mason. And the new athletic director who Candace Lee has been there for a long time, knows the program, and knows the athletic department, actually pulled the trigger. That's good. That's exactly what you want. But this this would be big for Vanderbilt to finally start jumping on the trend train. And as I say that, a young offensive-minded head coach in the last five years since Sean McVay went to the Los Angeles Rams has been the hot topic in coaching. Everybody's trying to find that next guy. And when you when you do it, it changes your program. Yeah, and it's no, look, it's not no gonna doubt. make Vanderbilt compete for SEC championships, but it sure as hell gonna make them better than 0 and 9 or 0 and 8 or 0 and 10, which I predicted, Austin, my, my season prediction for Vanderbilt at the beginning of the year, defeated. I said they'd get one. Yeah. And I knew hey, that they weren't going to. Might be Tennessee. You could backdoor cover that. I could backdoor cover that. You could be the Carson Wentz. Wentz. Yeah. Carson Wentz doing that last night really, really <laughs> ticked me off. Uh, so Brent says South Carolina will hire Freeze, Vandy will hire Healy, and us Tennessee fans, he says, will be stuck with Jeremy Pruitt. And that would be the worst case scenario. The odds are more likely for that to happen. Yes. And that would be miserable for Tennessee fans because you're just delaying the inevitable and taking punishment. Well, because Will Healy would take the Tennessee job over Vanderbilt. Now, if you fire Jeremy Pruitt, you'd prefer to hire somebody bigger than Will Healy because that's the difference in Tennessee and Vanderbilt. But Vanderbilt, this is this is their shot to go get Will Healy. Go do it. Go do it. Yeah. I, I, Man, I think you're like right. if you need you the, need juice, if, Will Healy's if, got all of it, if, and he has the recruiting connections to actually pull it off. Austin, if that happened, the other worst thing that it does, it makes Tennessee fans start to get angry at Phil Fulmer, and that's the last thing that Phil Fulmer wants in his life is for Tennessee fans to start speaking poorly about him. Right, his whole life, he's a when you think of Vol for life. I only think of one guy. Again, I'm not a Tennessee fan. I think of one person. Every time I see VFL or Vol for Life, I think of one man. It's Philip Fulmer. It's nobody else. I don't think of anybody else. And so he he has to be cognizant of that to say, this fan base and Vol Twitter will get you, and it'll get you good if you don't pay attention to them and – do a little bit what they like, okay. and then win football. So games. Carson says, I agree with you most of the time, Austin. You completely missed on the Tennessee situation. If you could expand on the Tennessee situation and tell me where I missed, I would love it. Did I miss my preseason prediction? Absolutely. But where you else? You definitely did that. Yeah, but again, most people did that. Well, you most, said they were going to win six games, right? Or yes, seven. I said six. Most people missed by three games on Tennessee's win-loss total right now. Most people did around the country because Tennessee, they were supposed to beat Kentucky. They were supposed to beat Arkansas. And they were supposed to have a chance to win at Auburn. We some, were supposed to have a good 2020. There's Tennessee's supposed to be 4-3 and three right now. 
They're supposed to be. But Jeremy Pruitt and Jarrett Garantano has kept them from being there. And now they're two and five. Yeah, they ain't. <laughs> and that's not my fault. <laughs> no, it's that's not, not my fault. No, it's different. All right, Zach, you ready? I am ready. Trivia Tuesday. We've been doing this. This is week 10. Big week in Trivia Tuesday. So don't go anywhere because we want your help. I want to know our record. I got our record. We're going to need your help. Our record, Zach, as an A to Z sports team, 67 and 22. That is 75.2% correct. We're answering 11 questions today. So we get to 100. We've got to keep that 75% number. We can't dip down. So that means we have to get at least seven correct today. Seven is our number. Seven's our number that we got to get. I would love to get closer and, and get a lot better than that, but well, it's going to be tough. I, I will tell you that. Really, I've looked at some of the questions. They're hard today. Uh, well, we need to go seven and four today. It's not asking a lot, but we need to do it. Well, let's start with this is considered easy, but we'll see if it is. Okay. What golfer's first name means victory in Hindi? Oh well, VJ Singh. It's got to be VJ. Yeah. Right. The answer is VJ Singh. Okay. <laughs> which which vintage player is known as the first superstar of the NFL? I think I know it, but I want to know which vintage player is known as the first superstar of the NFL. Is this this is labeled very hard? Well, let's think about this because the NFL is this pre merger. Like what it? No, it would be. Post, Post merger, AFL is different, but the NFL, nineteen sixty, was still existed before the merger. It was just without the AFL. So, which vintage super? That's tough. Which vintage that, player was, yeah. is known as the superstar so, of the NFL? So, so Je- my, Jeff Rubel, uh, Brent, Dom, Danny, all say Joe Namath. That's what. And I, that's where I was going to go to. Yeah, I, I, I'm lean on Broadway Joe. Yeah, because superstar on and off the field. So, do we want to go with Joe Namath? The other ones, what you have, Gale Sayers, Bart Stars, Jim, Jim Bart, Brown. Jim Brown was more '60s, so that's pre-merger more. Joe Namath was more post-merger. Gale Sayers. Gale Sayers was too short-lived. The Kansas Rocket didn't have a long enough career. I don't even know if he played post-merger because of knee injuries. So, we want to go with Broadway Joe. I think it's got to be Broadway Joe. It's listed very hard. No, he missed it. Did we name it? Red Grange. Oh, Red Grange. Okay. Beginning in 1925, Ugh. Red Grange was the first player to attract the masses to NFL games that's, and thus credit, credited with legitimizing the league. That's tough. Red Grange. That's tough. You learned something. Yeah, today. I did. So first NFL superstar, Red Grange, back in the 20s. 1925. All right, so we missed. So now that was seven years post- uh, the the last pandemic. It's true. <laughs> it's very true. Red Grange lived through the fir- the pandemic a hundred years ago. He did that. That means something back then. So yeah, and man, I wish we could get Red Red on the phone. I agree with. Him. We agree need with some Puka. advice on I, how to handle. I agree with Puka. The definition of vintage was way too vague. That's why it was very hard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're one and one. We okay, we can only miss three more. So let's get let's keep or two more. Right. We need oh, to we get have- seven and four. Seven and four is our low point, okay. so we can only miss three more. Who was the MVP of the 2010-2011 NBA regular season? That's This is up to you, man. Okay, so 2010-2011 <laughs> was the year that LeBron lost to the Mavericks in the NBA Finals. That is one thing I do know. Okay. Now, the following year, Kevin Durant, That's when they. that's when LeBron won his first – Championship against Kevin Durant. Okay, and such. we've got D Rose answers flying in, and I believe that it is Derrick Rose. All right, because that was the year that LeBron, Derrick Rose, did he tear his ACL? Is the MV, uh, MVP year? Did, did he do it in the playoffs? Yeah, against the Sixers. Yeah, I believe that was the it case. that year. Um, I I think it's the Rose year, as uh, we're many going, many are saying. We're going with Derrick, Derrick Rose. Rose. D Rose. The answer is. Derek Rose. All right, all right, all right, all right. Two and one. That's good. That's good. We needed that. All right. Next question. Um, let's see. I think we've already had that one. Um, uh, I gotta find them because some we've of them answered a lot. 
Yeah, we have answered one. Um, all right. This is a this is a difficult question because I don't know. I, it's it's labeled as easy, but I don't really know. What sport can improve your posture? <laughs> The question is an easy question labeled. It says, what sport can improve your posture? Every sport? This is such a stupid question. Yeah, Puka says every sport. Is this a trick? Gymnastics? Golf. Swimming. We got... We, Did we get an we assist? Have user help. We, well, and I think it's swimming. Rob now. says swimming, too. So we've got multiple swimming. Now Tony coming in with swimming, but we had a lot of help back here with swimming. What was your name? Melissa. Melissa for the win. I think swimming, swimming is, makes the best perfect sense. Okay, let's go. Let's go, Melissa. Oh no, it's not. No, <laughs> it's golf. So think about this posture. Yeah, I understand. What do you sit up and do? Race car driving? Horseback riding. Oh, what? That's not. Is that, is that a sport? It is a sport. Horseback riding is. Oh, that's stupid. This is why this is tough. Stupid. This is why stupid, it's tough. Stupid. Man, I, we are, after coming off our best uh, ever, nine well, out of ten. Well, we cannot choke are, this away. Now we're two and we're two. We're two and two. We can only miss two more questions. We have to get five more right. God. Okay. Go. Okay. Uh, which team not Melissa's this fault. this could be tough. Which oh god, this is medium. Which team sent four players to the 2015 NBA All-Star game? It has to be the Golden State Warriors. 2015? It has to be the Golden State Warriors. You would think so because you've got Curry, Thompson, Durant, and maybe like Durant England. was not there in 2015. That's the difference. 2016, LeBron beat them. So 2015 okay, was the year before. It was the first year they won the championship. So maybe I'm wrong because it would have to be Curry, Draymond Green, uh, uh, Clay, Clay Thompson, Thompson. But who is the fourth? Yeah. It, it wouldn't be Iguodala, would it? Two thousand and fifteen was the first year that LeBron went to Cleveland. We're getting yeah. We're, Nate says Curry, Thompson, Green, Iguodala. We want to go with Golden State. What about the Celtics? There's not a fourth okay. guy. I, I think it, either the Cavs because it could be Kyrie, LeBron, Kevin Love, Delonte West. <laughs> I mean, who, who's the fourth for Tristan Thompson? I don't think he was an all star. Yeah, I think Tristan it, Thompson was though. I think yeah. Warriors or Cavs? I think it's between those two. What about the Thunder? Harden was gone. You got Durant, Westbrook, uh, Stephen Adams. Crap, uh, Ibaka. There's not a fourth. I, okay, I know that, but I, there's at least three. I'm it's, just thinking. It's four players. So okay. I think it's Cavs or Warriors. Which one do we want to go with? All right, let's go Warriors. Warriors are more likely. Iguodala is more likely than Tristan Thompson. The answer. We got, we got a Hawks answers. Is they looked it up. Hawks. This was the year the Hawks were the number one seed. This is not good. Zach. Al Horford, Kyle Korver, Paul, uh, Paul Millsaps, and Jeff Teague. This is not good. We're two and three. What year was the first Super Bowl played? 1965. Is that right? Yes. 100%? No doubt in your mind? No doubt in my mind. You're wrong. No, no, I'm not. It's 1967. That's not right. No, that is not right. <laughs> that is wrong. You're, you're destroying this game. What are you talking about? You're destroying this game. The answer says 1960. That's wrong. What year was the first Super Bowl played? God, crap. Austin. I've never heard you say an answer with more confidence in your life. And you sat there. What Super Bowl are we about to have? 
I don't know, but no, one was not in 1965. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. We didn't even give anybody the opportunity. Super Bowl 54 was just played in 20 in February 2020. That's you don't do math on What's air. 2020 you you minus- broke our our golden rule. We never do math on air. Is that it? We're over, we're done. That's four miss. Well, no, we can still we can still go. We have to not miss anymore. That's it. Yeah, we have to. We have to. We're miss. two and four. We have to get them make the right next five or next four. Correct. Maybe okay. Five in a row. What the hell? The merger was in '65. Ugh. Did you know the answer? <laughs> no, you uh, you were so sure. I oh god, I'm so mad at myself. All right, so we have an easier one that has to do with the NBA. A silhouette of which player is widely recognized as inspiration behind the All official right. NBA logo right. designed in not 1965 but 1969. Well, we know it's Jerry West. So we roll forward. We're three and four. Jerry West is the logo. We know. We can we can move forward with that conviction. Okay. Gosh. Oh, I'm man. so mad. In a game of golf. No, we need it. Okay. All right. That's fine. Keep going. We've got how many questions left? Well, what are, we're three and four. So we have three more questions left. We've done four seven. More, four more questions. We've done seven. We're doing 11. So we get to a hundred. Ah, uh, that's right. So we have four more questions left. We have to go four and up. Oh, okay. We need everybody's help, please. Cause I'm screwing this up and we're not doing very well. <laughs> I'm we very to, flustered by we, the Super Bowl thing. Real we, quick. Bone and joint Institute, bone and joint TN.org, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care. Whenever that injury happens in life physically, I'm emotionally hurt right now by missing that Super Bowl question. But whenever that injury happens in life to either you or your family, make sure you check them out. Boneandjointtn.org, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic care. It is Esports. sports. Oh, we are so live mad. from a moment's peace, a moment's peace.com slash Christmas. Yep. It's the best gift that you can give this holiday season. It's so simple. The next question is in the game of golf, a low hook short that should which does not go very far is known as what so it should say shot in in a in a game of golf a low hook shot that doesn't go very far it says short am i i'm reading low this. hook short in the game of golf a low hook short which does not go very far is known as what a low hook snap hook shank so he, this is the this is where it's hard for me because <clears throat> hooking for I'm left-handed. So hooking for me is going to the right. Slicing for me is going left. So we're talking about hooking, which is going towards your body. A duck hook, a slice is away. So it wouldn't say hook, a low hook, short, snap hook. Fade is is that's the fade is on purpose, so this would not be a fade. I have, or a I have no idea, no clue. A punch shot is not it either. That's not even a guess. I have no idea. I'm out of this. Chip shot, no. We got to do dog hook, hook, snap hook. I, I. Uh, think those it, are the two. I feel like most this common is answers. Dumb. This is so specific. Don't get flustered. I it's am. just the game. It's, it's too late. It's sports it's trivia. Too late. <laughs> Bobby just says my tee shot. <laughs> Nate says that's a free shot, my dude. What's what's a free shot? Oh, Mulligan, he was answering that. It's not a fade because a fade and draw is the good thing you want. The this sounds like bad. Low hook short. Low hook short. What are we, what's our final answer? S- snap, snap or hook. duck? Snap. Snap. Yeah, there's no. There, we cannot have two duck answers in a row. Oh, I don't know if that's good logic. The answer is a duck. No hook. kidding. A serious duck hook. Well, I've never heard. Duck of hook refers to the situation where a golfer hits a low hook shot 
one that does not travel far. Turn the lights over. The lights off. The party's over. We digress. God. Oh, man. Yeah, uh, I'm with Mark. Never heard of that. Here's an easy one. Watched and played a lot of games. Here's an easy one. According to many Super Bowl, according to many Super Bowl MVPs, what is the preferred destination after winning? Disney. The big game. Is it Disneyland or Disney World? I don't even know. I'm going to <laughs> Disney World. It's World, right? I think it's Disney. World. I'm going to Disneyland. If it's World. West Coast teams usually go to Disneyland, <laughs> but if you're the Bucks or you know East Coast, uh, the Giants, Disney World or Land. I'm going to Disneyland. Is it Disney? It's Disney. It's Disney World. World? <laughs> it's World. We're going World? It's World. <laughs> Mark says Opulent. The answer is Disneyland. No, it's not. That's that, is, that that's the same thing. <laughs> it that says means. or going to Disneyland. Okay, so we, we got it both. So both of them. Got so uh, now we are four and five. We are under 75% officially. Let's just try to save. I feel like now it's like, are we playing for, for draft picks? What or? basketball move was banned from 1967 to 1976? We already had this. The dunk. We've had that one, yeah. So we can't have that one again. Um, I'm so disappointed. Which choke? In which sport are the terms stale fish and mule kick used? Mule kick. In which sport are the teams are the terms stale fish and mule kick used? I've heard of mule kick. Stale fish, no Stale idea. Stale fish sounds like <clears throat> skateboarding. Ooh, then maybe that's it. I mean, what do the people say? David I, says rugby. That I don't think it's not skateboarding. It's, I think rugby sounds. Well, I don't know. They gave us a question in horseback riding. <laughs> Fair. Brent says soccer. St stale uh, mule kick. Rugby. rugby. Yeah, I think it's rugby. Yeah, we're getting some rugby answers. Let's go. Let's go final answer rugby. Whatever. <laughs> God, we are the collapsing. The answer, and I'll give credit to it because somebody said it. Uh, Tony. Tony, who saved us before, the answer is snowboarding. We, we are on a train to disaster. Our final question. Isn't this our final? Yeah, sure. Our final question is also, I think, a tough one. 1990s actress Holly Robinson went on to marry which now retired NFL football player? Okay. What? A, this, <laughs> I don't even know who Holly Robinson is. That's what I was trying to think. <clears throat> Holly Robinson. This is stupid. Can we look up Holly Robinson? No, that's, is that that's illegal because then it shows spouse. It's true. <clears throat> I just need to see a picture of her. Anybody know? Rodney I, I, Pete? How do you that's guys? It. That is it. You're right. Because so Holly Pete. Yes, because uh, Holly Robinson was on uh, Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Yeah, Holly I Robinson was on Hanging with Mr. Cooper. <clears throat> the answer. I'm going with Rodney Pete. The answer is <sighs> Rodney Pete. Not like it matters. Now we can look up, and you'll recognize her. Probably not. I'm really bad at trivia. <laughs> Have you ever seen? Did you ever see Hanging with Mr. <clears throat> Cooper? No, it's not it's not um it's not coming to mind though you have you seen this no, woman no you've never seen this woman i mean probably but i don't reckon no she means nothing to me <laughs> all right good job at the end by everybody I, i've not me it, oh that, that's big time god what a collapse all so right we got so five what is right? our what is our We're final five and six what is our final uh percentage of the hundred because this is the bar 72 percent is that exactly right yes so we answered 100 questions well we got over 70 there's there's some half, glass half full austin we got over 70 that was our original goal we couldn't get to 75 the next we hundred, started today at 75.2 the next hundred we have to beat 72 it's a tuesday tradition it's very disappointing Oh man, that's passing. That's Alex, right? That's passing. Well, special thanks to a moment's peace for having us uh, into their home. They will invite you into their home. It is a outstanding experience right here. You can get a gift card. A uh, hundred dollar gift card is the perfect 
gift this holiday season. A momentspeace.com slash Christmas. A momentspeace.com slash Christmas. Go online today and stocking stuffer right there. Buy your wife, your lovely wife at home. Just say hundred dollars. Go have a you day. I actually had a couple's massage here two weeks ago. There you go. <laughs> it's amazing. See? Amazing. Made me feel better. I kind of need one now because I feel defeated. Deflated. All of it. A to Z Sports. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you uh, tomorrow morning on a Wednesday. A to Z Sports gift tour has officially begun here at a moment's peace salon and day spa. A lot more fun gift ideas for all of you in the coming weeks leading up to Christmas. So we'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.